Hey, how's everybody? How's everybody doing today here on uh, Wednesday, August the 14th or 15th? Uh, tells you how much I know. I didn't even look what day it was. This is your live streamer. How you doing, Clark Sullivan? Getting ready to do a live stream here at Bradley Manning Plaza. Uh, what to say, Bradley Manning Plaza at uh, Oscar Grant Plaza here in downtown Oakland. And uh, we're glad to have you here. And we're going to be here for the next hour uh, live streaming the Bradley Manning uh, rally. So hello to everybody. Glad you could be here. Hopefully the bandwidth will hook up. I hit a few uh, dead spots when I was rolling around here at Bradley Manning Plaza, but I think we'll be okay and uh, be able to continue webcasting. So just let me know what's up and you can log on to the social stream to chat or on the chat room. I got a small crowd here, about 15, 20 people. And this is Clark Sullivan, Freeman Sullivan on the web. Pretty much hit any Freeman Sullivan and Gmail, at Freeman Sullivan on Twitter, uh, Freeman Sullivan, Clark Sullivan on Facebook. So if you want to communicate with me, you can communicate with me in any one of those number of ways. Or you can log on to the social stream with either Twitter, Facebook, or Ustream, and you will be able to chat. And so I welcome you all here today. And I'm glad you could be here. Wish you were down here at Oscar Grand Plaza, your 12th Street and Broadway in Oakland, 14th Street and Broadway. Um, this is a site of Occupy Oakland, and uh, there's a lot of uh, former occupiers that are out here. Scott Olson's here today. This is sponsored by uh, Veterans Against the War, I believe, and uh, that's uh, what we're out here. Uh, we're here uh, protesting uh, the fact that Bradley Manning is on trial for leaking all the various leaks and then releasing them to WikiLeaks, supposedly, and which has been a great, good, great public service. And Bradley Manning should be commended as a public hero because what he did was truly patriotic, and he kept our government out of wars and out of all these little dirty little wars overseas, and he's revealed the true extent of the United States' involvement. And unfortunately, a lot of what he said was old news or they you know it's just basically what people had already known but still valuable nonetheless and we are here to protest his fact that he was being tortured while he was in custody he was denied clothing uh, kept in solitary under watch 24-hour watch uh, which we believe is unconstitutional and that we will not tolerate as citizens of the United States government so there's a little background about the uh, Bradley Manning's case. Uh, currently, uh, I'm not real sure where he's being held. Uh, I think probably it'll probably be he's held at probably Fort Benning, Georgia. But no, he probably he's probably going to be held at Fort George G. Meade, which is in uh, outside of Baltimore, Maryland. That's it because his his trials at Fort Meade. And uh, uh, strangely enough, my dad was stationed at Fort Meade for quite a while. So and I used to go see the the old Baltimore Bullets play there. So, uh, I have a little background on Fort Meade. I have a little history with them. Went to their uh, military hospital quite a few times. Anyway, for uh, people that are new to the, to the live stream, uh, we're here down at 14th of Broadway in downtown Oakland and for, uh, Oscar Grant Plaza. Uh, we're here uh, in support of Bradley Manning, whose trial starts in about a week at Fort Meade, Maryland, uh, which is outside of Baltimore. And we're glad to have you here. I'll be on the East Coast next month, uh, starting on the, uh, I'm probably going to leave uh, San Francisco on the 15th and go to uh, D.C. Where we'll see what happens, but next month I'll be spending most of my time on the East Coast, and I'll be able to bring you uh, live streams from there as well, because I'll be attending Occupy Wall Street and various other functions in D.C. So I welcome you to watch those live streams as well so there's a few other live streamers that are here that I see James and Jeff Jeff Coy he's, I guess he's back to live streaming he took a brief vacation excuse me sorry about that there he is he hasn't gone online yet but we got the crew here not too bad. How you doing? 
Just got here. I was uh, taking a couple pictures first before. Uh, before you got started. Yeah. I always forget to do that. I usually do it at the end. I was actually thinking about. Either or. Buy, you know, well, I just, might as well just buy another phone. You know. Speaking of pictures, since you're right here, let me get a picture of you. Well, I got picked up by the. Uh, not that it means anything. I got picked up by the examiner last week. Of course, it means something. You know, yeah, it would be nice if they if they paid me, right? <laughs> but it's still good. At least my stream got up on their website. You know, not that they're that reliable of a news source, but you know, at least the truth will come out. You know. That's right. The live viewing and the archive of it is what's important. Yeah, it's on YouTube. But I'm getting excited more and more. Getting ready to go to the East Coast. Woohoo for Occupy Wall Street, right? Yeah, you're gonna do that? Hell yeah. <laughs> um, when you get there? I'm gonna try and leave on the 11th and uh, fly into DC and hang out with my. I got a lot of friends on the East Coast, so when I, you know, I was living there uh, before I before I broke my leg and uh, got stuck here again. Uh, it's free, uh, free Bradley Manning, I believe that's what it is. Yeah, well. I guess you could use Bradley Manning. Uh, that's free Bradley Manning. That's fine. Poor guy. The guy is he still locked. He's locked up at Fort George D. Uh, Fort George D. Meade, right? Outside of Baltimore. That's where his trial is. When you do time in the military, uh, uh, the lens is covered up a little bit here. I got to get used. To I just got this new holder. For those of you who are watching, How was LA? Uh, horrible. Yeah, no, I don't like LA either. <laughs> it's too big. Yeah. Wouldn't be so bad if it was smaller. We live uh, where there's no buses, and the train is three miles away, which is not too far, but it only comes like every yeah, two hours. So you're and stuck. Yeah, and it's the busiest train line. Jeff Floyd is back in town for a visit. Hey, I was wondering if you could tell me that story again about what you were saying uh, when you were down in LA about getting rid of your equipment. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I am moving to the UK in like three weeks of uh, study, so I was at Occupy LA um, at Chalkwalk. Yeah, last week. And I had all my gear, you know, like, um... Well, <laughs> you get R2 to be quiet. <laughs> oh, there we go. So, anyway... Yeah, I had my, um, my vest and my, uh, my helmet. And I just gave that away to, uh, whoever needed it there. Uh, the people that were just sitting near me. Luckily, uh, someone put it on and he fit. Gave him the vest. I nice. fit the helmet though, so I still do have that. <laughs> I'd like to give that away. I left it in LA, so if anyone's watching from off of LA or uh, or around there, you know, just uh, yeah, get a hold of me on Twitter, J E F L K L O Y. I have a Kevlar helmet. Military Kevlar helmet for raids. For raids. I also have a monopod for the so you're going over to England. What? Where are you going to study? I am studying global justice. So it's, uh, it's a lot of human rights. And it's a 51 week program. Um, professor, professors, like one of the head professors went uh, to Cal. So he knows about, he knows about Occupy. Like they've always had you know, the student unions there, um, demos and protests, so I'm expecting that they're expecting me to, to show up for this. Good. So, at so least excited. that's a good thing. At least uh, I know they're progressive in that sense, and it's not going to be a 
closed up university that's just working with the system. That's great, man. Thanks for the information. Yeah. You know, uh, one love there. Yeah, we're getting a lot more people showing up. It's closer we get to five. Nice. That was Jeff Floyd, by the way. He's a, a live streamer. Getting ready to go England to study. Fighting. Anyway, you're live with Clark Sullivan here on the watch. <laughs> Not too much going on. Right? <laughs> if someone ever like tries to like bear like bear hug you, or try to capture you, you can see the How's it going? I see you. Where's Dr. Burger? Uh, right. Okay. What's up, man? Zero. Jeff. Jeff. Mark. Very good. Yeah, give me a call pretty soon, man, okay? Yeah. I'm getting ready to leave. I'm excited. I'm going to the East Coast. I'm going to New York for Occupy Wall Street. It's a good thing, too. You're going to visit friends. Well, my family, I, I grew up in the East Coast, so. Yes. I'm looking forward to it. Going to be staying with uh, Aaron K, legendary Yippie Pie Man. Oh wow! Nice. Seven. Well, he's, been, he's been a friend of mine for years and years. You know, I know all those Yippie dudes. <laughs> you know, I go back a long way. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited to be out here live streaming for all you who's watching. First time I've been able to get out in a week. Updates. And, uh, yeah, I've been sick all week. <laughs> Seems I run into you everywhere, man. I keep trying to get around. I try and be active. Who's singing you up? Um, Aaron Kay lives in Brooklyn. He's um, noted in the 70s and 80s for tossing pies at various public figures, right? And uh, quite successful at it. Anyway, uh, he offered a place to stay, so I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna, he smokes a lot of pot, so I'm going to lay a bunch of weed on him, you know, while I'm there. So, you know, they can't get good pot there, you know. Pot there sucks. So, uh, you know, they're looking forward to their buddy from San Francisco to come out and visit them, you know, where we have all the good pot, or most of it, you know. Do so. you like one of these? we got a Bradley Manning. That's what we're here today. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> We're here in support of Bradley Manning, who's currently in custody at George, Fort George D. Meade in Baltimore, outside of Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, he's on trial for, uh, maybe I should do an interview here with somebody in a minute. I was going to find out who's going to be speaking. Well, today, uh, I, I did find out that um, uh, C. John, how do you um, say the other guy? Of Julian Asang? Him. Yeah, they granted Ecuador. him. They granted him asylum in Ecuador, asylum. but uh, Britain doesn't want to let him leave the country. They said that they would actually storm the Ecuadorian uh, uh, embassy to get him, right? Which is a total violation of international law, right? Human rights. So I guess they got the Ecuadorian Marines there with their firearms at the ready, right? So let's just hope nobody gets killed over it, because that wasn't really the purpose for releasing WikiLeaks. It wasn't so people could get killed. It was done so they could save lives, right? In foreign wars, the needless foreign wars that our United States government is continuously at around the world on a 24/7 basis. Um, I bought it online. Handy little thing. It's called an instabler. There's the, there's the, the logo. It's called eye stabilizer. Yeah. And it holds the phone pretty well. Uh, about 20 bucks. Oh my. And it's got a real nice little spring on it and everything, too. Because I've been playing around with them. All right, let me move around here to the front so we can see the speaker. That's okay. Rolling through downtown Oakland, got some speakers coming up here. Maybe I went on the wrong side.
show their support. Um, you can come here and pick up a sign, and we'll get started with our speakers. Like I said, just a couple minutes. So we're here at the corner of 14th of Broadway in downtown Oakland. Uh, we're here at the Bradley Manning to uh, protest his incarceration. Uh, we're also here in support of Julian Assang. Uh, recently uh, has won asylum with Ecuador. Hopefully he'll be able to leave the country and go to live in Ecuador and out of the, out of the reaches of the United States government. So we're hoping for that. More people have some more signs. Starting to get a fairly good crowd here. About 50, 75 people. Come down and join us if you're in the area. We're here at 14th and Broadway, right by Oakland Bar, 12th Street City Center Bar. So uh, stop by and join us. We'd more than be happy, happy to welcome you and provide you with some more information uh, regarding uh, the case of Bradley Manning. This little tripod mount it makes everything a lot easier to uh, deal with. The camera is a lot stiller, I'm sure. Hey, how you doing? Not bad. Nice day. I'm sorry, you? I remember you. I can't remember your name, I'm sorry. Erica. Nice to meet you. Clark. Obama. Yeah. He's in a mask. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, does that ring a bell That's right, yeah, it rings a bell, yeah, okay. Yeah, here, let me cover this up. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, the problem, the, the first part of the day was pretty good. The second part of the day was like, oh, yeah. it was kind of pointless to even like try to get even closer. Yeah, I was, I was the idiot on crutches. Right. Oh, that's right. That's now, yeah, I yeah. remember, yeah. I was the idiot on crutches. Yeah, okay. Dude, so I'm masked up, right? And there's this cop following me because in a car because he was worried about, about her. That, yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> so she was going to make it. Welcome. 
the military has denied Bradley's right to show evidence that the U.S. government has admitted that the material released by WikiLeaks has not harmed anyone. Juan Mendez, the U.N. Special Rapporteur on Torture, was denied a confidential meeting with Bradley. Even still, after a 14-month investigation, he concluded that Bradley's treatment at Quantico was cruel and inhuman. And now the military judge has ruled that because he never met with Bradley, Juan Mendez cannot be called as a witness in Bradley's case. <coughs> And yet another reason that by itself is reason enough to drop the charges and dismiss the case is the unlawful pretrial punishment of Bradley Manning. Bradley's attorney, David Coombs, will soon make this argument. His 110-page Article 13 motion details the horrendous violations that Bradley suffered to his body and to his mind and to his spirit in Quantico. Article 13 protects against unlawful pretrial punishment and supports the precept of accused innocent until proven guilty. It states, no person while being held for trial may be subjected to punishment or penalty other than arrest or confinement upon the charges pending against him, nor shall the arrest or confinement imposed upon him be any more rigorous than the circumstances required to ensure his presence, but he may be subjected to minor punishment during that period for infractions of discipline. Bradley Manning has been a model prisoner, yet his treatment by the United States has been despicable. The government and the military have been hiding the ball throughout Bradley's pretrial hearing so far. They have not been handing discovery over to Bradley's attorney as they should have been. Our latest discovery is that Bradley's horrible treatment at the Quantico Marine Brig did not start with a brig commander. It was ordered by a three-star general, though everyone under him who participated in the mistreatment was complicit. I, I won't detail those things. Maybe somebody else will later, and you should look them up. The 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 part that was new to me was that he couldn't even support his back leaning it against the wall when he was hitting me uh, on the front. Anyway, uh, that late discovery held on to by the prosecution for six months after they received it is the reason for the current delay in Bradley's Article 13 hearing. Daniel Ellsberg is a hero for having released the Pentagon Papers in 1971 during the Vietnam War. Obama said that what Ellsberg did was different than what Bradley Manning did. That is true. Everything Ellsberg released was classified top secret. The president displayed his ignorance in pointing to the difference. Everything that Manning is alleged to have released was classified only secret or lesser classifications, not top secret. Much of it not classified at all. Is the president saying that Ellsberg deserved more punishment than Manning? Bradley is accused of aiding the enemy, but that charge has not been defined. There is a difference between intentionally aiding an enemy and publicizing information for the public that the enemy has equal access to in newspapers. Blowing the whistle on war crimes is not a crime. It is time to prosecute the war criminals, not the whistleblowers. Obama not only has not prosecuted the Bush regime war criminals, he chose to become one himself. He is both a war criminal and a domestic enemy of the people and the Constitution since he signed the NDAA and shredded the Fourth, Fifth, and Sixth Amendments and subjected all of us to martial law and indefinite detention. Under the Constitution, it is Obama and every senator and congressperson who signed the NDAA who have committed treason against the people in the Constitution. So the war criminal empire, excuse me, so the war criminal emperor has locked up and abused a soldier who has not been convicted of anything and is a hero if he's guilty of what he's accused of doing, shed truth and light on the illegal and immoral acts of the USA. Bradley Manning needs all of you to help him win his freedom. Please go to BradleyManning.org to donate to Bradley Manning's Legal Defense Fund and learn more about his case and how to educate the public and organize to free Bradley Manning. Go to www.standbradley.org, standwithbrads.org, to sign the petition to support him. Thank you, and free Bradley Manning. So as Bob just mentioned, you can go to BradleyManning.org to learn more about how to take action for Bradley. But as a matter of fact, we are going to be taking action for Bradley here today. We will tell you more about that after our next couple of speakers. Next, I'd like to welcome to the stage Sarah Ruthin. I may have mispronounced her last name. But Fera is a wonderful Iraqi refugee student and peace activist who we've had lucky, who we've been lucky to have present with us at peace actions here in the Bay Area. Thank you, Fera.
Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming here tonight. Um, this is a great honor to be here speaking, representing Iraq, and um, speaking about Bradley Manning and the courageous deed that he has done. So uh, I have a little speech prepared, so bear with me. When I was living in Iraq, I thought speaking the truth was nearly impossible. No one dared to even think about revealing a shred of evidence about the regime or its injustices. And then I went to Syria to find out that Iraq was not the only country that had a police state system. But the police state system was a popular system among countries around the world. And then, sorry, popular system, but it kept the people from the truth. It deprived them from their right to be informed on what their governments do and don't do. And instead, spreading slogans praising the Lord and the man in power. And then I came here and I found that people who tried to speak the truth are all often accused of conspiring against the nation. And rewarded with legal charges and scrutiny by their governments. In essence, we're all condemned for speaking the truth that reveals the facts of our regime. Iraq was invaded for the wrong reasons, and I'm sure you all have figured that out after nine years. But for nine long years, what the U.S. has brought Iraq, the kind of freedom that it gave Iraq, and all the things that it's doing in Iraq till this day, is beyond what words can say. But over a million Iraqis were killed since 2003. More than a million widowed women left in Iraq. Over two million Iraqi children were orphaned. Four million Iraqi refugees still live in limbo around the world, displaced and unaware of what will happen, what their future will be like. And hundreds of thousands of Iraqis are imprisoned with no prosecution. The freedom that Iraq has today cannot be called freedom, especially when the democratic government in Iraq has different loyalties other than that for the Iraqi people, loyalties that are often questioned. If Iraqis were to speak the truth about their current oppressor, they're gone into the abyss. They're imprisoned, they're tortured, or even assassinated. Methods the Iraqi government has learned from its allies to keep the truth hidden and bring no mention of where all the oil is pumping and where the money is going. But Iraq needs, just as the world, is more Bradley Manning that are not afraid to reveal the truth about what really happened and still happened in Iraq or in Afghanistan or in Syria or Bahrain. Enough is enough. Enough deception, enough corruption, enough killing and waging wars on assumed threats. Let us all stand together and demand there not to be another Iraq or another Afghanistan. And let the truth be revealed. Those who speak the truth like Bradley Manning, and others, they should not be condemned for standing up and telling what their government has been lying about for years and years. So thank you very much. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce Jeff Patterson. Jeff is Project Director of Courage to Resist, Steering Committee for the Bradley Manning Support Network and a veteran and GI resistor himself. He can tell you more about that. Hey, all right, Jeff. Woo! Hey, thanks, guys. I'm, uh, I'm among friends here, obviously. Oakland, my adopted hometown. I, I fled San Francisco finally after years of no parking. But, uh, <laughs> briefly, you know, Bradley Manning, uh, Curse Resist, uh, we've done dozens of defense funds. We've helped hundreds of resistors. Some of our people, we win. They don't go to jail. Some of them, uh, we don't win enough, and they end up doing a year, 18 months in, in a military prison for refusing to fight, for, for refusing uh, to go along with the program quietly. But Bradley Manning is a, a, a case in its own different plane where we're dealing with a life and death question, a person whether, a question of whether this young man has a life or he spends the rest of his life in a military prison facing life in prison for aiding the enemy plus an additional 150 years 
And that's, and that's the seriousness we've taken to this case over the last two years. When Bradley Manning was still in Kuwait in a military prison, we collectively made a promise to him that we would cover his entire legal fees if he selected a civilian attorney, because we knew it would take a civilian attorney to give him a fighting chance, even in a military court. And we only had about $2,000 in the bank uh, he took us up on that challenge, and so far, with the help of people just like you, we've paid $250,000 to keep an entire legal team working for the last That sounds like a big number, it is. You can't buy a house around here, of course, for that, but still a big number. The attorney, the attorney's assistants, the clerical staff, we have expert witnesses, our forensic evidence, so people ask, well, are you challenging their evidence? And yes, we are challenging their evidence. We've met that, and this is, and now we have some hope. Going into the Article 13 hearing, we now know that when Bradley Manning was tortured, it wasn't just because of the guards, it was because of a conspiracy from a Pentagon level general. And every level of the chain of command, those people followed illegal orders in punishing, torturing Bradley before his trial even started. And now there's hope. Now it's still slim hope, but there's hope that justice will be served if the military judge is courageous enough to do the right thing, but we're gonna have to wait and see. But there's hope, and that hope exists only because of people like you, what we're doing today, and our funding of Bradley Manning's legal defense team. I just heard word from the Iraq Veterans Against the War that their action has begun. Today, August 16th, in three major U.S. cities, they're doing a coordinated action to send a message to the one person who has power to free Bradley Manning. They're getting together to ask President Obama to A, apologize for comments he made last year prior to trial about Bradley Manning's guilt. And number two, to ask that President Obama follow up on newly revealed evidence that the orders to torture Bradley, hold him in solitary confinement for 11 months, were actually coming from a three-star general, somebody potentially in the Pentagon, which is very serious because that means the military lied to the public when they said it was for mental health reasons. So. Veterans in three cities are asking Obama campaign offices to fax this letter to the central office, and they're doing sit-ins. And I've just received word they've begun their action. So I would like to thank everybody very much for coming to our rally. I would now like to invite everybody who's willing to march down with us to the campaign office and show us their support from the outside, and we'll continue our speeches there. So people and if you don't have a sign yet, there may still be some at the bottom of the lamppost. We're going to simply march down to the office, which is two blocks down that way, stand outside and continue our speeches.